I came to the Artemis Center because I heard that uh, you utilized mindfulness with depression and anxiety. Can mm -hmm. you elaborate on how that would help me? I might have you engage in an exercise in just identifying what your thoughts are about the depression. Like, you know, I shouldn't be feeling this way, or I wish I could stop feeling this way, or why am I feeling this way again, or this is never going to change. We'd sort of look at those thoughts and generate some of the feelings and thoughts and physical sensations that come up in terms of how you respond to your depression, right? And then we would probably start looking at whether or not that response is moving you in the direction of the values you've chosen or the goals that you want to achieve. I'm Artemis Teigen and I am the director of the Artemis Center for Family Therapy. We're going to be meeting today to talk about mindfulness in clinical practice. Another part that I would be working on is helping you to look at what are the values that you want to head in the direction of achieving and whether or not your current thinking patterns are moving you in that direction. It's a little bit more of the cognitive behavioral piece. So I might have you engage in an exercise in just identifying what your thoughts are about the depression. Like, you know, I shouldn't be feeling this way, or I wish I could stop feeling this way, or why am I feeling this way again, or this is never going to change. We'd sort of look at those thoughts and generate some of the feelings and thoughts and physical sensations that come up in terms of how you respond to your depression, right? And then we would probably start looking at whether or not that response is moving you in the direction of the values you've chosen or the goals that you want to achieve. And if they're not, then we would look at whether or not you want to abandon that evaluation or replace it with something different, right? So these are sort of mindfulness concepts because it's allowing you to stay right here in the present and figure out, is this helping me right now? Mm -hmm. Is this getting me to where I want to go? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. to How can it help with anxiety? It's similar. Um, anxiety is um, kind of a cousin of depression. And often what's happening with anxiety is there's a future orientation. There's worry about maybe the depression mm -hmm. never ending, things never changing. Right. I'm always going to be this way. I don't see an end to this. Right? That's the future orientation. And anxiety drives that. And I think the reason why anxiety drives it is because I think people feel like if I can think ahead into the future, if I can get ahead of this, I can somehow control it. But it's That's an illusion. It, yes. It's an illusion. We can't. We can only control what we're dealing with right here. So if I can help move you again back into the present and begin to question whether or not those fears about the future have ever even happened, are they happening now? And is there anything we can do about it right now? And if the answer to those things are no, then again, we might help you to sort of begin to let go or diffuse from that style of thinking. And one of the ways I might help you to do that is taking you on a mindful walk, mm -hmm. help you attune to the environment, help you pay attention to nature and weather and what it feels like to walk and what it feels like to be connected to the present moment-to-moment -moment awareness. Right. I might have you work on meditation where you focus on just paying attention to your breath and what happens to all of that crazy thinking when you're just with your breath. I might have you use your five senses while you're taking a shower or washing the dishes to help keep you right here instead of letting you snowball into that place where you're like, this is never going to change and this is never going to get better and I'm, I'm never going to feel happy again. I'm just washing the dishes and I smell the, the Dawn soap and I mm -hmm. like the way the soap feels on my hands and if I don't pay attention, I might drop a dish 
and how many more dishes do I have to do and how does it feel when I've accomplished this task? That moves into the forefront, that moment to moment, present centered right. awareness. All this stuff that's called depression or anxiety moves into the background, right? It sort of, it's still there, it's still right. like la la la, but it's not as noisy, it's not as loud, and it's not driving the show. Right. So if we were to establish values for you around the treatment of depression, what would be a goal for you? Where would you want to hit? Maybe fewer days where you feel sad? Yes, more days less, where you anxiety, laugh, less, less anxiety, anxiety um, more joyful times Absolutely. as opposed to sadness. Lots of joy. We want that, yes. right? Yeah. So one of the things we might do that's just kind of, uh, kind of a psychoeducational piece is we, we track it a little bit. Right? Okay. I'd want you to have a calendar where you'd start writing down, this is right. a bad day, this is a good day, or half the day was good, half the day was bad. I'd want you to start being able to recognize when there's a variation. Mm -hmm. And I'd want you to pay really careful attention to when you just don't notice being depressed at all. Even if it's for like a fraction of a second. Like, wow, when I was laughing in therapy with Artemis, I didn't feel depressed. Okay. What's that about? How come that happens? Yes. Right? So we'd start to pay attention to the things that you do that move you out of your depression, right? Even if they're just momentary, because as we build a larger repertoire of those things, you have a toolbox, right? right. And you can remember, well, when I'm doing this, I'm not feeling like I'm falling into that pit. Part of it is dealing with the fear that comes up for you when you have a joyous moment and then you're afraid you're never gonna have another one. Right. Right? Like, I don't even know if I can tolerate being this happy because I don't want to have this and not have it again. Correct. Right? So part of it is you learning how to linger hmm. in your joy. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, let's expand, Savor it. let's expand that. Let's not rush away from it, right? Right. And if joy is followed by a moment of fear or sadness, that's okay, because joy is going to come back too. But it's teaching you that it's going to come back, right? And showing you in therapy and in maybe some of the homework that I give you around working on your breath, working on your five senses, working on staying present. How often does joy show up again? Or how often does n neutrality show up? Where I'm just, I'm not depressed at this moment, right? Right. And if anxiety shows up or panic shows up, recognizing that it also has a beginning, a middle, and an end, right? It doesn't have to dominate everything. Even if anxiety shows up every night at five o'clock, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have to chase that, right? Okay, so it shows up, but then it also goes away, right? Enough pills will do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, and gradually. <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> grad well, no, that's truthful, but gradually, yes. you know, we see whether or not panic and anxiety can start to remit with fewer and fewer pills, right? Okay. So rather than numbing it out, we want to figure out what is it that you need? Okay. Right? Do you need a lover, a friend? Right? What is it that you need? And we want to bring that into your life, not another pill. Right? Right. Let's take one less pill tonight, you know, and let me say hello to somebody. Right. right? Let me take another less pill tonight and let me go to karaoke. Right? Let me do one less pill again, right? And see what it feels like to just have the sun on my back today, right? So we're allowing opportunities to come in that feel better than what you're doing. Right. And we're, we're stringing them together, right? Okay. So that more and more of your day starts to show up with better and better experiences that surprise you. They may creep up on you like, wow, like I woke up this morning and I didn't feel depressed. And we don't even have to analyze that. We just like it. It's good. Let's just leave it. Do you feel depressed right now? No. What do you make of that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Can't explain it. Doesn't matter. We don't have to. Right? Yes. Just notice it, right? Right. That. Just notice that. That while you're engaged in doing something that's not depression, <laughs> something else shows up. Correct. Okay? So we don't even have to 
believe or have faith that it's going to work because it's working right now, right? Mm -hmm. As you're staying present with me, you're tracking with me, you're listening and understanding. Depression is moving to the background. Correct. Right? This is an act of mindfulness. You just being here with me. Right? Okay. So this is how it works. Right. We don't have to chase, is it going to work? We don't. Not helpful. Mm, right? Not beneficial. We really want to just pay attention to what's going on right now. Right? Living in the moment. Living in the moment, exactly. When we have really bad days where there's depression or anxiety or trauma that comes up and feels like it's going to kill us, right? That's like a storm, okay? okay. Like a really heavy thunderstorm with lightning and hail and like you better take cover kind of storm, right? Correct. When we have really bad days like that, all I would want you to do is to remember the storm has a beginning, a middle, and an end, right? That how, how bad you feel about those things that are coming up is going to pass and you've already lived them the worst of it nothing else has to happen and it doesn't have to be an indicator that you're going backwards you get to have bad days you do <laughs> right but when we have a bad day we don't say to ourselves this is never going to end yes. right this depression's never going to get better this anxiety is never going to go away this was just a bad day I get to have that bad day. Sometimes I have a bad day. Mm -hmm. And I say, okay, I can't do this today, and I give myself a break. Right? Correct. Yeah, you get to do that, too. Okay. You do.